Hey everyone, welcome back. It is still Mitral, and today we are going to talk about how much in-depth knowledge of SQL you should know as a .NET engineer. I've prepared a special roadmap for you. In this roadmap, we have two sections, one for relational database, the other one for NoSQL. Especially current nowadays, you should know both databases, at least one relational database and one NoSQL database. And I have tried to commonize all this knowledge for you especially as a more than 10 years of experience as a software developer I've used a lot of different aspects of Transact SQL and also NoSQL so from my perspective I've prepared a special roadmap for you to describe all the important topics to master to be a really good .NET engineer with SQL in your arsenal okay so Let's get started. Let's first start from the essentials. In our essential section, we have DDL operations. First, let me tell you one thing. Of course, we are using ORMs. You are using ORM. You're mostly using Entity Framework or other type of ORMs. But having ORMs in your arsenal doesn't isolate you from SQL knowledge, okay? So it doesn't mean that you should completely ignore C SQL because for example, let's say you are using Entity Framework, you generated a migration file, you need to first check, I always check my migration file because in my code side in Entity Framework, I may forget to do some additional so adding some additional constraints or uh, defining proper data type, etc. That's why after migration generation, I'm always checking if the generated migration file correct or not. And how you can do it, of course, you should understand basics of SQL. You need to understand the table structure, how to create table, how to alter, drop, how to create columns, de uh, delete, alter columns and also you need to understand the basics of SQL from the data manipulation perspective. You need to understand how to write proper select, update, delete, insert, bulk insert, merge type of operations. And of course when you create a table, the table consists from multiple columns and your columns you should specify always data types you can specify the proper data type for your columns this is really important data types act as a um, constraint in your case and you should specify to write a really to design a really good database you should first start from the essentials from the tables and data types okay and um, in our data types like in c sharp we have functions well, of course for for example in sql we have exact numerics approximate numerics date type uh, date and time types string types other types etc but mostly we use date time and string functions you should learn some essentials functions related to date time for example end of month uh, date add date difference date from ports date name date port i don't know the get date get utc date sys date time and the other type of functions and from the string perspective like in c sharp we have possibility to interact with string the trimming taking the left part right part to do some um iteration over string etc so that's why it is really important for you to understand the essentials of date time and string functions the second part here is going to be our basic querying because when you build your query your query mostly consists from select from where group by having order by offset fetch top and they are the most important keywords for you to learn when you start your sql journey okay and mostly when we develop our queries uh, our queries mostly consist from these keywords and the next one is of course joins what is a relational database in relational database we are not storing all this information in one table so we have relation between our tables and let's say to store some information we need at least three tables but our users don't know about this table so we should represent all the information in one and that's why we need to do some join operation okay you need to understand inner join left join right join of course having cross join and full join in your arsenal is totally good 
but uh, at least you need to understand inner join, left join, right join. We have a great possibility to interact with different tables, also with the same table, using subqueries to do some statistics, to get some statistic information. That's why you need to also learn how to write self-contained subqueries and correlated subqueries, okay? Cool. And we have other popular commands like union, union all, case, when, then, we have cross apply, outer apply, which we're actively using in our uh, database querying. And of course, we have special section called table expressions. We have views, functions, driver tables, common table expressions. Oops, let me update it. Okay, this is common table expressions. Mostly in my practice, I'm using views, functions, common table expressions. They are really important, for example, to retrieve hierarchical data to read to write recursive query, we mostly use common table expressions. And also when you have some sort of windowed functions and it is not possible for you to query to the same uh, select, you are using wrapper over your select using common table expression. It is possible to do it using driver tables, but uh, you know that driver tables are, have some um, limitations. Uh, you cannot refer to the same driver table. Uh, you cannot write the um, recursion in your case. That's why I, I always prefer using common table expressions rather than using driver tables. And of course, we have physical uh, storing mechanism for our views. We can materialize it. For example, you are using the um, uh, joins. And to not to write these joins every time we are wrapping it to views, we are storing it, we can materialize it. And to do some additional operation, for example, you can do the same operation you do in your view using functions, but functions um, are a way of retrieving argument. And based on this argument, you can return a table, you can return a scalar data. That's why we have table valued functions, scalar functions. They are really, really important when you build your logic on your SQL side, okay, in your SQL side. We have really great data statistic mechanism using windowed functions. You need to understand the basics like row number, rank, dense rank, also using sum over, mean, max, count over type of things, aggregate uh, window functions, offset window functions, ranking window functions. They are really important to retrieve statistics information. We also have working with JSON and XML. Uh, I mostly used uh, the working with JSON because you may have some um, API that allows you to retrieve JSON to parse and interact with this JSON information. You don't need to do the additional operation on your C sharp side. You can just forward your JSON and your C, uh, your story procedures, your uh, code in your SQL side can work on this JSON. So uh, interacting with JSON and also for in some cases, you may need to work with XML also, for example, for old legacy codes or some databases that created the years ago, and they are using XML rather than JSON to interact to work with. So uh, having the uh, working with JSON and XML on your arsenal will be really good for you. And of course, what we can do without store procedures. Store procedures, for me, the one of the main elements, one of the building blocks of SQL, especially when you work with entity framework, it is we have also possibility to work with store procedures. For example, in most cases for entity frameworks, we are using views, we're using functions, we are using store procedures. You have possibility to call store procedure. You can implement all the complex business operations in your store procedure side, okay? Uh, for example, in one company I worked, there were some uh, store procedures and they use it C sharp for just as a wrapper like uh, for example, you are doing the mobile development. Mobile development just calls your C sharp endpoints to do operations. And uh, for data driven applications, mostly you can implement um, for, let's say, for old school type of logic, you can implement your operations business logics in your store procedures. Okay. And that's why it's totally okay 
to implement all this business stuff in store procedures. But the problem here is when you migrate from one database to another, uh, moving store procedures to another table uh, will create a lot of difficulties for you. That's why we are using Entity Framework wrapper over our databases and Entity Framework helps us to just switch from one database to another with an easy manner. Um, but of course, it really depends from your database implement if you have a lot of stuff in your database uh, site, like business logic, etc., it will take some time for you to migrate it from one database to another. But uh, for example, in one company I work at, we had all the logics in database and we had uh, more than thousand store procedures to implement all this logic. Even I created a special micro framework in Transact SQL to handle all these processes. And having store procedures in your arsenal is really, really good for you. And let's talk about transactions. When you work with Entity Framework, you have you always have transactions, okay? The meaning of transact SQL is a transaction. So we have transaction in this word. So having transactions uh, in your arsenal will help you to understand how this transaction process is working. We have uh, different levels of transactions, how this transaction is working, how to do commit, rollback, all this stuff. For example, in Entity Framework, you have begin transaction and transaction, etc., And it is generating a special transaction from the SQL perspective, that's why you need to master, not just now, but master transactions to understand what happens behind the scenes. We have special topic called indexes, of course, to optimize your query, it is always preferable to understand behind the scenes operations. And one of them is going to be our indexes. We have clustered, non-clustered indexes, just learn what is a clustered index, what is a non-clustered index, why it is possible for us to create one clustered index, but um, multiple non-clustered indexes, how they can help us to optimize our queries. And we have some advanced topics which you may or may not use in your practice. For example, it would be for me always better to understand the execution plans from the uh, query tuning perspective, from the, uh, the checking that if query is fast or not, but um, it is, let's say, optional for you. Uh, the full text search we have, FTS, it is optional, execution plans, underlying algorithms, relational theory. For me, to understand relational theory, theory is really important because using relational theory, you will understand why we have some sort of limitations in SQL site. But again, it is up to you to dive into details, but you should learn all these topics if you want to be a really good .NET engineer. And depending from your project, you may use, for example, four of them, or you may use totally all of them. My In my uh, last project, I have used a lot of stuff from here. So depending from your project, you may use 30% or 50% of this elements, but in general, I have described what I have used so far as a .NET engineer in my practice from the SQL perspective. Of course, the topics I've described here are related to Transact SQL mostly, but uh, some of these topics with the same name exist in your PostgreSQL or other type of relational databases that you may use, for example, for microservices. We mostly use the PostgreSQL for your other type of applications. For even your microservices, you can use Transact SQL. There is no limitation to use it in microservice or not. But uh, these topics, the names, the exact names here are related to Transact SQL. You may find them with a different name in PostgreSQL with some sort of different implementation, but uh, taking some, any of this language, for example, you can take Transact SQL or you can take PostgreSQL and try to investigate and try to learn this one. And it would be really easy for you to map your knowledge to other type of relational databases. And now let's switch to NoSQL. In our NoSQL, nowadays we are having different type of uh, database models. And one of them is going to be our NoSQL. And NoSQL is really helpful when you work with distributed systems, when you have a huge amount of data to handle, because when you have 
tons of information uh, it is a little bit hard to handle them and to work with them in a relational databases but uh, you it is not a hundred percent guaranteed that you will work always with huge companies so you should learn one relational database and one nosql database okay and for the nosql databases we have some sort of common topics like data modeling we have document-based data modeling we have key value based document modeling we have graph based document modeling for example you can start from the document or, or key value based data modeling to understand to learn why we have the document modeling why we have key value modeling the pros and cons of using uh document or key value then we have special partitioning mechanism in nosql this is also really important so in nosql we have six or seven special important topics and one of them is going to be data modeling the other one is querying the third one is partitioning we have security this is really important you need to understand how to implement authentication authorization and for the nosql we are using this um, database model for make our application scalable and high available that's why you need to understand how nosql adds these attributes to our database and of course we have uh, different apis for nosql different implementation mechanisms like the mongodb cassandra etc so you need to master these apis also so this is a general view of a uh, NoSQL and SQL. My preparation is start from relational database. I will add this um, model to our Git repository so you can easily download and start to investigate it. Well, that's pretty much all. Uh, if you like my videos, please don't forget to subscribe, hit like button, share, and I will see you in the next tutorials.